I think that so long as uh, homophobia and transphobia continue to pervade our communities, this um, horrific acts like this could happen almost anywhere. Every year, in terms of reported hate crimes, uh, hate crimes against people because of their sexual orientation or gender identity continue to be the highest reported. So I think absolutely this could happen here. yesterday morning, Sunday morning, and I first heard about this vigil, and I, I knew that our community had to stand up in solidarity with the folks in Tel Aviv, with the folks who were experiencing so much pain just because they were LGBT youth, um, and for no other reason than that. So I knew we had to stand up strong and show that DC was standing with those folks over there. When I first heard about the shooting that happened on Saturday night at the Agudá Center in Tel Aviv, I was horrified. The idea that someone could walk into a support group of young people, of Jewish young people, of gay young people, of any young people, and could just shoot indiscriminately, it, it just struck me to my core. So when I heard about this attack at Aguda, you know, a lot of the translation said that it's a club. But it wasn't a club, it was like a clubhouse. It was like walking into anyone's living room and creating such a, you know, heinous crime. Israel takes pride in its open, democratic society that is founded on mutual respect and the rule of law. As Prime Minister Netanyahu stated, the government of Israel is committed to bringing the murderer to justice and to treating him with the utmost severity of the law. The embassy extends its condolences to the families of Nir Katz and Liz Trubishi and wish a speedy recovery to those who were wounded. We make a promise. A promise to preach respect, a promise to seek justice, to speak for righteousness, to always, always demand equality. A promise to proclaim that bigotry and hatred have no place in our society and that love and tolerance are our cherished religious values. Seeing the news today about this attack was like seeing one of my worst nightmares come to reality. In thinking about it over the course of the day, I was thinking about the young people whose lives were lost, th those who still remain in critical condition, and the families who, for the first time, might be finding out that their child was LGBT and might be coming to terms with that through the lens of this horrific attack. I also think about the other LGBT young people who participated in this program. Here in D.C. and all over the world, safe spaces for LGBT youth are still very few and far between. All too often, their schools, their communities, and even their family homes can be sites of rejection, torment, bullying, and even violence. For these LGBT young people, programs like this one, and like SMILE, are a refuge, an oasis, one safe space where they can really be themselves, where they can start to come to terms with their issues as LGBT youth, and where they can realize that the profound sense of isolation and sometimes desperation that they feel is felt by other young people just like them and that there might be light at the end of the tunnel. For this horrific hatred and violence to be brought into a space like that is such a violation of everything that SMILE holds dear. It's almost unspeakable to talk about. I know that you all will join me in keeping those affected by this attack in your prayers and keeping their families in your prayers. And I also ask that you think about all of the young people who may have participated in this program, who may have just heard about it, um, who may have been told by a supportive teacher, and think about whether or not that safe space can ever really be restored.